like last time. Interesting. Hello everyone. Hang on, let me turn this on. Let's see. Oh, already coming in with the questions. Gang. Interesting questions. <laughs> Hello everyone. Well, in case you didn't notice, based on the comments, today is Songwriters Camp and we're talking to Austin Knight of Water Parks. Oh, they just joined. Let's see. If I can oh oh there it is. There's the request. Is it gonna go? Who knows? <laughs> Hello. Yo. We made it. We did it. did it together too. Awesome. How are you? I'm hanging. Um, we leave the tour tonight. So there's definitely nothing to get done. There, I'm not doing 50 things. I'm not doing a lot of laundry. And I separate my colors too. <laughs> so I'm, do you have it down to like a T by now though? Like, of course this? I do. Okay. Yeah. Like, I have to, like right now all the blue stuff is in. It's blood. I was doing blue and green. The last load was purple and red. So I'm kind of like trying to condense it because we have seven hours. Wow. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us today with this busy nonstop. I mean, of course. I just, I just picked up a new ring too. I'm excited. <laughs> So to jump off of songwriters camp, um, to kick it off, we always ask, how'd you get your start in songwriting? Badly. I started writing songs when I was like 12 or 13 and they were so bad. I still have all the books though, all the journals. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends knows where they are, just one. And he's got instructions if I die to, to destroy them and not read them and not let anybody get a hold of them. Cause I see what they do with other people where they're like, here's their journals. These are mm -hmm. their, and I'm like, fuck you don't, I'm sorry. I don't think I can say that. Um, forget you. I don't want them mm -hmm. to ever read those. Cause they're so embarrassing. And I'd be like a ghost just sitting there cringing. Like, ah, like if anyone saw them. So why keep them then? I'm like a sentimental hoarder. Okay. I have every phone I've ever had. Every single one? Yes. <laughs> Do you ever go back? Do you ever go back and read them, the songs that you wrote when you were younger? No, because I winced, but I can't bring myself to destroy them. Ah, okay. Hang on, I know they're in this box. <laughs> this is one of my boxes of just sentimental stuff. Okay, hang on. Absolutely. I'm finding them all. I have a big freezer bag of Polaroids right here. Hang on. Here is every single tour pass, every tour laminate right here. Um, here is, oh, people yelled at me for this one, but I'm gonna show it anyway. Um, ev like almost every hotel key. Oh my. I know, it's not a good thing. Um, 
Oh, here we go. Phones. One, two, three. This is every phone I've ever had. Uh, and I didn't get to have one until I was like 14. I was like one of the last uh, people in my ninth grade class to get one. But boy, did I get one. Okay. Um, oh, here's the first one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, I'm so happy that the conversation went here because these are so fun to look at. I don't, I, it's so sticky. And for what? What's in here? Oh, here's another. Okay, actually, I've had I've had phones. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna put them on this. Okay. I need to wash these pants. Okay, I'm putting them on pants. I need to wash. All right, I'm gonna try and do this. In, you know what? I'm not gonna try and do it in order. It'll take a second. So, <laughs> you ready for this? I'm, I'm the just showing you this so you know I'm not lying. Here we go. Uh, how do I flip it? I'm 40. Here we go. That is insane. Why do you have two of those? Right? Things? I love the Crazers. Yeah. Like, had these, like, they were like, you know, there was the Razor phones. These are like the yeah. thinner ones. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they're really fun. You could do like that with them. Like, yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. amazing. The Razor is my and first phone. This was my first, first phone. You know what I'm saying? Like buttons. Uh, iPhone 4S. I have one of these. I don't know what it is. Um, but it was there. Yeah, and then the rest are just the iPhones. That's amazing. Kind of a phone connoisseur, you know. Anyway, what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, to get back on track. Um, mm. But so you'll, you'll, you don't reread your songs that you wrote when you were younger at all, ever? I barely would you ever to, like, like try to like re songs. I'm always like would you ever try to like rewrite one to like oh maybe that was a nice jump jumping start there's a chance I could pull like a line possibly mm -hmm. but the problem is I was at first I was just copying like <clears throat> Some 41 and Green Day and like Good Charlotte and Blink, as you know, most people did. Mm -hmm. And I was like writing songs about shit I knew nothing about at all. I was writing about girls and I was like, dude, never even like held someone's hand. I was writing about, dude, I made songs about like partying when I was like 12, just because I was like, yeah, it seems like what people make songs about. Mm -hmm. I've literally never drank in my life. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, and then there's like the overly emotional, like brooding stuff. Uh, so you were literally just writing to write. Yeah, I was just like writing because I was just like, you know, I want to. I don't even know why. I think I was just doing it. I was just like, yeah, songs that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that, and. I had lived zero life, and if I was writing about my experiences at that point, being like 12, I don't know, I would have written about like trying to kickflip and like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> so how would you describe your songwriting style now? Very good. No, so, um, so I found, I think I found a good place for metaphorical slash animated slash pretty writing with the first couple albums. And then, um, it started feeling really good to just say what I was feeling and thinking like in a more blunt way, specific way like and not leaving anything up to interpretation and just saying shit. like it, it just felt better especially if it was angrier it just like a little more cathartic yeah um and so now i feel like it's a good mix of the two because i think if you go too blunt you just wind up sounding like these like 
bullshit TikTok bait people who are like trying to create like a 10 second clip. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not, yeah. And have you, do you feel that you've reached like a comfortable balance between the two? Yeah, I think it's good. Cause I mean, there's like, I mean like Funeral Grey for just for example, cause it's mm -hmm. like one of the most recent things. Um, or the most recent thing until tomorrow night. Um, you know, there's stuff like the bridge where it's like nicer and it's like flowy and pretty and, you know, kind of metaphorical and stuff. And then there's like, like lines going in like the second chorus where it's like, no, your dying wishes to be baptized in my spit. Like, it's like, it's like, it's like kind of funny, very like in your face, blunt, mm -hmm. not metaphorical. Well, I mean, there is, there is, there is actually a layer of something in there, but I'll probably get to that more as the album starts rolling out because I don't want it to be taken disingenuously. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying is like now I feel like there's a balance because while I enjoy reading certain, you know, stuff like if you go back and listen to like our song, uh, like Sleep Alone, for example, like off the second album, it's some of the prettiest, like some of the like prettiest, like metaphorical, you know, all this mm -hmm. stuff. And there's like a lot of like, like colorful animation and wordplay and all this stuff. But then it's really fun to do stuff like Tantrum or Turbulent or whatever live where it's just way more in your face. You know what I mean? Yeah, for so. sure. And are you thinking about the live performances when you're writing your songs? Normally, no. Like, I mean, I mean, okay, I consider it, but I don't necessarily write for the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, actually, so we're about to drop this song tomorrow called Self Sabotage. And we just started practicing it yesterday. And I was like, oh my God, I left no breathing room for myself. Damn it. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I'm really not thinking it like, so I think about it in the way of like, say, for example, there's uh, like an insane outro on a song where I'm just like, oh my God, live. They're just going to kill each other. Let's go. This is going to be crazy. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, that's kind of the extent of like the live thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, because then songs usually like if, if necessary, become altered for like a better live presentation. And have you ever written a song and then thought that it was gonna go insane during the live performance and you predicted correctly? Yes. <laughs> Which song? Yeah. A lot of them, but especially like Turbulent and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And when no, you say that, that's the song that like gets the biggest reaction. Yeah, Watch What Happens Next does numb gets a really good one um there are certain songs that people always want us to play but like it just doesn't get that kind of reaction i'm going back to look at let me see you know fuzzy actually does better than i thought it would live i mean i knew it would be cool but mm -hmm. it goes well um yeah there's there's certain ones that you you would think go well or like you know have like a ton of plays or whatever the like popular ones but for some reason live they just don't happen like that that's so interesting mm. and then the songs that you i mean like you're performing songs that aren't necessarily out yet live how does that I love happen? doing that it's yeah. fun like so the first time we play it uh everyone's just like oh my god what the hell is this you know whatever whatever mm -hmm. and then the second time we play it people know the words from live videos and i'm just like and then the third show, somebody showed up with a brainwash tattoo. And I was just like. <laughs> Same. Yeah. So why do you do that, though? Like, what's the mentality behind it? Mm. Fun for me. Okay. And I like watching people want things. And. I don't know. It's more fun when people want things rather than putting stuff out. Mm -hmm. And why that song specifically? Brainwashed? Yeah. Mm. 
I just, I think, I think it's so good. And then, you know, I send newer songs and mixes and stuff to like a very small group of friends that I like trust with things. And so many people were just freaking out about Brainwash specifically. Um, like, and I was, I was thinking it'd be really fun to do that and just let live videos circulate of things. Yeah. And so like, like for example, like Mikey, um, he hit me and was like, dude, Brainwash is the one, you gotta do that one, da da da. And I was like, you know what? He's right. And, and I like, I like, you know, just watching, or, you know, I, I haven't been looking too much lately, but I loved playing Brainwash and then just watching everybody be like, put it out now. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> the power. Yeah. So why, Funeral Gray, to go back to that one, why was that the first release after Greatest Hits? Because we had so many shows coming up and it just felt very good. And even thinking about like Sad Summer, for example, with um, the one we leave for tonight, um, just thinking about how that's gonna feel outside, like in the sun with mm -hmm. like a, a bunch of people and stuff. It was just like, that one just, it, like it was kind of an intuitive thing, you know? Yeah. And like, I, I still pulled other people's opinions just to see and it wound up being really unhelpful because everybody had a different favorite song. Mm -hmm. And, which is a good thing, uh, which means there's a lot of good songs, but, um, but yeah, I don't know, that one just felt right for the amount of shows that we we're about to do and the kind of shows, you know what I mean? Yeah. And speaking about Funeral Grey, like it did come out, not that too far behind Greatest Hits, but can you see how your songwriting style has changed in that, even that short amount of time? I think I just started going like, like trying to write songs more with a guitar again. Cause normal, like with great, I mean, yeah, with greatest hits, I had this boy and mm -hmm. I would just, you know, have chords looped, you know what I mean? Like yeah. and, and like pads and stuff, layer a few things up, let it run for however long and then just like freestyle over it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, there's actually uh, like, so it's, it's kind of the same idea, but more so just with guitars. I think I just wanted to go back to like holding a thing and like, I don't know, cause I mean, that's how it all started. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, like back to your roots. Yeah, see, and that's the thing is like, I never wanna, I feel like, and I, I could be wrong or talking out of my ass or whatever, but I don't like, I feel like I never wanna do the go full, like back to the roots thing because I feel like that's what people do when they're like, they did something that didn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, like something, they put something out and it was like, okay. And people are like more into old stuff. And mm -hmm. they're like, you know what? Don't worry, you guys, we're going back to our roots. It's going to be like before it can be like before, you know what? And I never want to do that. Like if people don't like shit, I'm just gonna be like, okay. And then, you know, keep making more because there's always a lot more to make. And actually, Literally, Funeral Grey and Brainwash were both with this little, like, $50 guitar. That this one? This guy right here. Yeah. yeah, it's literally like, like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's it. And like, Funeral Grey, it's like the whole thing. And then Brainwash is like, uh. You know what I mean? Like, that. it's like, and it's, it's just fun to like have just this little dude in your hands and you're just like, -ba 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 -ba, and you're like, dude, the song, you know what I mean? And does the music come to you first normally or does the lyrics? Mm, it varies. Cause sometimes I'll have like a conceptual idea for something or I'm like, mm -hmm. a song about this would be amazing. I, I almost just gave an example of something that I want to put out of it. it's not on the ah it's not on the next album but there's like like i'll have like just like a good idea for like i'm like if there's a song about this that kind of went like this mm -hmm. and i kind of like jot some verses just to go back to and like refine later mm -hmm. that happens but then there's also times where like like i made the brainwashed riff 
Actually, and the funeral gray one before any lyrics were there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it really does vary. And so does, like, the next era of your music, like, band kind of just, like, lay out itself? You don't necessarily go in Sort of. Yeah, I mean, it's not, like, a conscious decision. It's kind of, mm -hmm. like, what's happening. And then I also get bored really easy. And so I guess, like, the style of how things come together fluctuates and changes every, like, yeah. Six months <laughs> do you find that that's fun though because i mean you're constantly creating like a new approach to your music yeah also you are so good at like like articulating <laughs> questions that like move things forward i feel like you've done this before <laughs> i have done this quite a few times but it gets easier who have you talked to in the last week um last week was Haley kiyoku oh tight the week before that was bishop briggs Yo, Bishop's so good. Yeah, she's awesome. And Hell just yeah. the, yeah, especially her new stuff is just like so personal and just like 100% authentic yeah. herself. And that's the kind of music that I love. Yeah, sure. definitely. I think Zach, our producer, worked on one of those new ones too. One of the ones that just came out. I'm pretty yeah. sure. He's the man. Yeah. Look at him and go. Work finally when you like are in the studio working with producers it's easier like when you have a personal relationship with them yeah i hate doing like i i almost never say yes to like like session offers because mm -hmm. it feels so weird like the idea of like walking in i even like make fun of it like i walk in you know I, I did a session with someone like a few months ago and uh I rolled in. I was like, cool, let's talk about your personal shit. By the way, what's your name again? Yeah, yeah. tell me what's going on in your life, man. Did it? Like, you know, it, 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 I was joking and everything, obviously, but it really is kind of like that. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. I feel like you're yeah, just like it's, it's, super personal matters that, I mean, you have yeah. to put it all out there if you're going to be writing the song that you think that fans are going to connect with. Definitely. And like, and I feel like it's easier for some people or if they're just like, not really being genuine in their writing it's maybe a little easier because i've done sessions like like 2017 is when i started like doing sessions like either i mean like just in general because sometimes you're not even writing like hey we're doing a song for this today you're just like you're making a song mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you don't necessarily know where it's going so everyone's just kind of sitting around like what's it going to be about you know what i mean and mm -hmm. like before when i would just say yes to whoever there was definitely like some dipshit stuff where it was just like, what if it was like, like just for example, it'd be like, what if like tonight's the night? I'm like, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? It's like, sorry. Um, <laughs> <You're> fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. usually I, like, I try and have lyrics done before a session starts. And then if there's, if someone's like, you could say that better, then mm -hmm. I'll like, you know, tweak it, refine it make it better but yeah i don't know lyrics sit like group think lyrics usually fucking suck yeah uh -huh. and what do you hope fans get out of your music i hope they feel good or if it doesn't make them feel good maybe it makes them feel understood that'd be nice and is there one song in particular that you feel most proud about so far as far as like the new stuff as far as anything in your entire career mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of new ones that i'm just very very excited about but let me look at stuff that's out what do you mean something went wrong come on spotify we're live with entertainment weekly <laughs> be better do better. It's my least favorite thing. Okay, um, here we go. Um, you know what? I really it's it's a fun thing that our biggest song was made up so quickly, like behind like a trailer at uh like it was literally on a show day and I was just like, ah, I got an idea. And I just went and sat down, like voice memoed. Mm -hmm. I missed something place I don't want to die anymore, like full verses and choruses and everything. And it almost didn't even make it because it was just like a quick side idea. 
and it became literally the biggest one. I think that's fun. That's insane. Are there songs that haven't made it on any album so far that you're like holding on to? And yeah. Waiting? So how do you know which waiting song? How do you know which song goes to which album then? I don't, I just, if I feel like I'm gonna cry, if something, if like, like doing like the mock cutting stuff, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, cutting things off track list. If I feel like it's just gonna fully devastate me, I'm like, okay, so that one should be on it then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if it just hurts, which it does, if it just like normal hurts, then I'm like, all right, maybe that one can wait until I make it better. Like we have this song called Never Bloom Again. And that was written before like Stupid For You. Not completed, but like there were like versions of it. Like where like the chorus is the same and like some of the verses and like, I think mm -hmm. even like some of the pre's like, like a bunch of that one was written before the first album was even out. Wow. You know what I mean? So like sometimes songs are held on to just until I feel like they are ready, good and lovely. And we're asking everybody this season, what is your song of the summer? Funeral Grave by Water Parks. Hit song, hit band, smash superstar guitarist, creepy weirdo little drummer. Nice voice singer. Nice, great description. And now that tour is happening, I mean, you just fit, wrapped up your UK tour. So was there a highlight from that tour? I liked almost being lit on fire um, in London, because we had fire for the first time. And it was <laughs> so hot. And it was like this far from us at certain points. And I felt it and it was like cooking me and I was just like, mm. and I told our business manager that we like about the fire and he's like, but it wasn't real fire. And I'm like, yeah, it was. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, it was like fire. Like, Wah. and he was yeah. like, I, we, I don't, I don't think we set insurance for that. I'm like, we didn't. <laughs> and um, he was like, oh my gosh, I get, we're going to do it more though. Mm -hmm. um, I also really loved Portsmouth um, because I made friends with a swan and I would show you, but we're on my phone right now. Made friends with Juan and ate lunch with it at the beach. And it was like hissing at us. And people were like, you got to watch out. And we're like, I'm not fucking scared of you or anybody. And kept feeding it. It was hanging with us for like over 20 minutes. It was awesome. Um, That's amazing. I got ice cream, went to the beach. It was all rocks though, no sand. Uh, I uh, found one store with blue Gatorades, like real ones. Cause like UK blue Gatorade, I still take it cause it's passable, but it just, it tastes like, you know what Mio is? Like that stuff you squirt in water. Yeah. It tastes like watery Mio mixed with like Powerade over there. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I found a place with like 12 of these and they were like way marked up. It was like six bucks a Gatorade, bought all of them. Um, that was a highlight. I was just like, yes. Anything familiar, I'm just like, this is the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now that the U.S. portion of the tour is coming up, is there anything that you're looking forward to? Or just all of it? Yeah, being able to open my Postmates and see, like, stuff that I recognize. <laughs> like, and not, like, Chibo's Pizza that doesn't even show up, like, mm -hmm. an hour later. That's going to be, like, opening my phone and seeing, like, <laughs> like Panda Express... I'm going to be like, this is amazing. Like, I, I felt like, this is going to sound like a joke. I felt emotional. I was just like, mm. Mm. like having thoughts, being able to like order things that I know and like. Yeah. They're just comfortable. Yeah. And with the upcoming tour, is there anything you can tease or what song you're most excited to perform to the U.S. audience? Self-sabotage. And what can you tease about that? Because that comes out tomorrow. I'll tease five seconds. <laughs> we have five seconds. Well. And that's it. And that closes out Songwriters Camp. Songwriters, we are.
Have Amazing. you ever written? Well, thank you so much for taking. Wait, no, I said, have you ever written a song? No, I'm not. I'm not that kind of writer. I've written short stories. Short stories are good. Yes, and I've written like a couple chapters of a book, but I've never written a song. Ooh, a couple chapters. Yeah, that's a that's a dream though. That's a little. Okay. Need to work on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, are you gonna are you gonna work on it more? Yeah, one day, one day. When I'm not one day. When I'm not busy with work. You're always gonna be busy with work. Okay, when it's not summer, when it's not like the busiest time of the year, then I'll sit down. Is it the busiest? In the entertainment, summer is the busiest. Summer okay. fours, That's summer true. blockbuster movies. I was gonna say like, like, uh, what's it called? I was gonna say like holiday time is super busy, but then I was like, no, not for entertainment. Everything like shuts down. Fam, what up? Nice. I just started looking at the comments. Yeah, everybody's been on the comments, like, excited for tour. Asking yes, amazing. There's a lot of questions in the... They want to know when the album's coming out. A lot of knives t knives out, too. Knives out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. What a day it's been. Yeah, I hope you um, wrap up your laundry soon. Me too. I'm so for it. I'm so tired. Um, are you going to any of the shows? No, I can't. Hater, what city do you live? In? I'm in LA right now. Oh, well, oh, yeah, it's in Anaheim. I wouldn't ask you to make that drive. Yeah, it's in Anaheim. Everybody else who's in LA watching this, you have to make the drive though. I'm sure you will be in LA. Well, actually, you know what? You're going yep. to My Chemical Romance in October at the Forum. That is big true. I will see you twice. Oh, okay. Let's go then. Mm-hmm. It's you. Signed CDs. No, I haven't signed the CDs yet, and everybody's very mad at me. But hey, I'm doing other stuff. Otherwise, self sabotage couldn't come out. I'm busy. Oh, and I wouldn't have clothes on tour, so I'd have to play naked, and I would go to jail, and Twitter would be so mad at me for showing my butt. But and no, it's really, we're on it. We're on a nice publication. I'm not going to talk about this, but um. But priorities, you know. I'll get to the CDs. There are like two thousand of them that I have to sign, as well as the meet and greet posters. How long does that normally take you? So long, but not as long as Otto. Otto is our drummer, and he writes like a freak. Uh, <laughs> like okay, let's say these glasses are. <laughs> Or like a pen, right? You know, normally you're like, do, 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 whatever. Yeah. He writes like this. And he writes his full name, like a psycho, and he won't not. Doesn't he like smear the ink? You would think. No. No. That's, I mean, good. That's he, a skill. He figures it out. He's like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, everybody in the comments, go see um, Water Perks on tour. Yeah. And if you don't, Otto will get you. There you go. You heard it here first. And, and then you don't want to be got like that. Also, everybody go stream self sabotage tomorrow. So Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Of course. Thank you. And I'm it's excited fun, to see you guys. It's, it's fun being on Entertainment Weekly. Yeah. I feel like Brad Pitt. We've Brad. never had Brad Pitt on one of these, but maybe one day. Brad Cooper. We're making our way up in the world, yes. Brad, hang on. The Lebs named Brad. Brad Paisley. Maybe. Scarface, the rapper, his uh, given name was Brad. Who is Brad Bird? <laughs> That's a crazy name. That's enough. Thank you for having me. Of course. Someone said you are Brad Pitt. Yeah, I am. I'm better than him, actually. Yeah. Because I'm a nice person. There you go. Zeph's in here? There's a lot of people in here. Yeah, there are. What's Zeph saying? It's probably nice. Nope. It wasn't. All right. I hope you have a very nice day. I hope you do too. And have a great tour. And I hope I see you crowd surfing at the LA Mike Kim show. 
we'll see. My best friend might be up there. She'll be up there, not me. Okay. Okay, tell your friend. I will. I will. All right. Well, I'll see you at the My Chem show. I will see you there.